Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, course and I am going to be doing part 4 uh, I have in part 4 I have a real client which is right here in my hand, you guys can see that um, and in this in this section we will be basically doing everything on a real client so that you guys can get a better idea we're not using a virtual, virtual is just for for you guys to get used to it play around with it but now it's a real system in front of me and then I have my um, my main console which is open from here you guys can go here right click and open the console and then log in and you'll get to this page um, but to get to this client and to manage this let's say for example these are 20 computers in front of you right now and remember we did that on a virtual system you have to put that agent and to get that agent on a work group computer you need to get the same username and password on this machine and the same username username and password on this machine we did lab admin remember uh, as a username and password so what I did I also added lab admin a username and give it administrative rights uh, and the same password on this machine so what I'm going to do next is I need to put the same client um, and that uh, is the agent that we want to put so you guys can go to uh, um, let me see if it's an inventory uh, not inventory you guys can go to software deployment and you get cl click on install agent uh, it, and if you if you don't know where to get the agent it's pretty easy you guys can click on scope management here first click on admin then scope management uh, and then it will give you that uh, same link where we got the download uh, client and this is where it is right now um, we made we, we put this under a share uh, and now we're gonna add this computer and this should show up under the student computer here too so uh, the as you can see the virtual machine is down and this is a red sign so let's go ahead and add this this real machine and start managing from here and then the rest we can do um, from there and that's how you're going to be doing in a real um, in a real real scenarios so uh, first we need to go to our machine which is the laptop here and I need to get to my share so I'm just going to do PC. So I'm typing the share where I saved. You can do the same process by going to uh, basically. If you guys go to um, like get a USB um, and then get it from uh, plug it into this laptop, you guys can do it from that too. But I just want to know that um, can I get to my share first? Uh, let's see. So we got it is a home PC. Um, this machine is not able to get to the so let's see what could be stopping it we need to check our, our properties and we're gonna go to remote settings and in the remote settings it says do not allow connection to this computer I am going to turn this on that's fine and allow everything here because I need to get to that share or else I could just plug in the USB get the client in like I said do it that way. Um, now I'm gonna go back and type home PC, and it might not work right away, but let's see. I'm just gonna enter it and see what happens then. There you go. So we are going to change the name, which is home PC backslash. That's when you get to other computer, you need to do this. And then I'm going to put uh, my username and password, which is actually, we'll put my username and password, which I'm using right now. Wherever the share is and wherever, whatever the password um, you use, you should be able to access that share. So there you go. We can now I'm actually accessing my master computer from here. Um, if you don't know how to do this, plug in the USB into your master computer download this uh, agent take out the USB plug it into this machine and run the same agent that I'm running right now so this is the agent right here we're gonna go ahead and install it and let's see what happens then so our main purpose in this video is to show you guys 
uh, how to manage a real system and from here on we will be managing this system this is our student here uh, and we need to manage her laptop so she basically let's say is uh, one of our students in the lab and she has we assign this computer to her and we want to manage it just like other students you're going to be doing the same process on all of these computers if you get a prompt just say yes alright so it's done just remember it takes a few minutes to uh, finish the installation so don't get um, discouraged and cancel anything just be patient so when you see this successful installation just close this and then you need to just re restart this client so um, it will be nice clean and fresh installation and then the client should start working so we will restart this computer and from here on this computer will can be managed from here now what we need to find out and confirm is the username and the password that we use on that computer right here uh, doesn't match the username and password over here so then everything will be nice and clean uh, if it's not working then there's something not right maybe firewall issue some other and that's something we're going to troubleshoot right now and that's something you probably will um, be doing the same thing uh, but it depends in on the situation so let's see what we will be do doing right now hopefully it will be uh, nice and clean everything will be nice we'll see our uh, computer name here so when this starts you just have to kind of give it a little time uh, because it's kind of uh, web based system so it will it will run the inventory on the client machine here and then it will start scanning it and then the information will pass through to this master machine and then you can figure out things okay is this machine missing any patches do we need to so deploy a software uh, do we need to do reporting and all that stuff that's it I mean at the end you're just basically managing these computers you're doing things very easily uh, you have done the hard work and from the here on life is easy not so easy but kind of alright so we're just waiting for it to come up alright so computer started and now I'm gonna log in as lab admin I mean it's up to you guys if you want to log in as a, another administrator account but we just created this we just want to make sure that password that I put is correct um, and once you log into this machine what we need to do is to verify if the client is running on this machine and does it um, what is the server address is this this address and then well, that will tell you that things are good now we're logged into this uh, account we'll get in there and we just want to check if um, first if the connection is running connections are unavailable that's fine we need to first add ourselves to the connection now that's going to be a little problem because my computer actually maybe not we'll, we can try this uh, and see what happens here I might get a different IP address though. So let's see if I can put my IP. Say yes, turn on devices connected. And I'm just going to go ahead and um, look for the IP address. Is this guy can create a problem if we are totally on a separate network IP config. yeah 
Alright, so what we need to do is to log back to the other account. I mean, as long as this account has a username and password working, we're good. Uh, it's just that I don't have the key for the other network at this point. So I can't test that. I'm going to log in in a different account and pause this video. So this is the account we were on before. And uh, so what I want to know is, is the IP address of this is under 10.0.0. .0 because that's the IP address I want. Now, just because we changed the whole network, now everything is changed, which is not good. But we can test it out. Let's see if it's can, it can even talk to that server. So right now, it tells it tells me right here that it's connected to my server address, and that's the home PC right there. The agent is uh, green, and that's pretty nice. Everything is working, uh, and the other thing we need to do is to right click on the agent and see if it's gonna apply configuration scan and upload patch details that's a nice one right there and you see right here update is ready to install now these are the things that people will get on their machines like students will get these messages and if you don't have a way like I say this so many times that if you don't have a way to um, do this automatically or through deployments then you're doing this on a physical one by one computer uh, and again I always give these examples that if you have 30 30 30 computers and you get the same updates on 30 30 30 multiply by how many minutes that's a lot of work for someone who's alone or one man IT or even if a group it, it's a lot of work so manage managing things uh, through the software uh, is the way to go now these days and it also gives you more advanced skills you can basically do the big this is what most of the people do when you um, go to a higher level of IT jobs um, administration is all uh, remote stuff I mean most of it is just remote scripting uh, you need to build PowerShell scripts and all that to work on some things that you don't need to go all the time people don't log into servers all the time it's you do things remotely you have one machine you work from from it uh, so that's the main thing you know you want to learn more and more uh, so we was just waiting for this and let's see if you go to patch management and we'll see how many computers we have you go sign in again if you get this message uh, and you see right here it says manage system 2 so it automatically picked it up things are good um, this machine is going to sleep mode or uh, maybe my battery yeah that's why so I need to plug my battery and these things can also happen when you're doing a live video. Uh, let me fix this first. And then I'll come back to you guys. So what's going on with my... Okay. Everything is plugged in. Everything is plugged in, but it looks like my my laptop just burned or what? No. <laughs> okay, so the battery is F1 battery is low. Thank you, sir. Battery is low, and I don't know why this is not working. Well, I have everything plugged in nice. Oh, uh, okay. So something is. Something's not right with my charger, and I made sure that it's plugged in now. Let's click on F1 and let's go back in there. Um, as you guys can see, I'm doing this uh, and troubleshooting at the same time. And this is what you do in IT all the time. You get this, these problems that it just comes out of nowhere, and then you just need to fix it. And fixing is nothing, it's just that you need to look into things, that is it connected, things are working and all that stuff. So, a good example in front of you guys. So we are back into our uh, account and so from here on, you know, now that computer is basically, my, uh, that computer is being used by a student and uh, this is where you start working from here. Um, and when you get this message, generate summary, it just give you more summary about the computer. So this is a good sign right here. We have two computers that we can manage from here now. Uh, one was virtual one and we're not touching that. We're going to be working only on this computer from now on. So let's go ahead and see what we have here.
so these are the two systems and it says right here Sarah is basically online and her computer name uh, is a uh, Winter, uh, Windows 8 Enterprise and this one is 7 Enterprise and now how do you manage this computer um, we need to just go ahead and look into this stuff um, by doing scanning so let's go ahead and find um, let's see what's going on with this computer so what we do is we're gonna click on this computer and then we'll do is uh, scan this computer scan system and when you click on scan systems you will be able to click on this machine then and scan systems so I'm just gonna do one right now right now last scan there's no scan not scan this one I'm gonna scan it right now and scan in progress so what's gonna happen this machine is gonna uh, this is gonna go through do its stuff and look into this machine and see what is it missing is it missing some type of very uh, well-known security uh, um, uh, patch or update that needs to be done um, and it will tell you is it vulnerable or is it not it's another way because remember I told you guys this has a great um, tool in here that says vulnerability update your vulnerability database so it looks uh, it talks to its server and every time it updates itself if there's a vulnerability and then you you will scan your system and say oh you know what this machine is missing the vulnerability and now you know how you're getting this update now Java update this is very common in a in a in a real world example when you work uh, Java updates are always coming up so you need to come up with a way to either disable the Java updater uh, and you do your do do it do it from your side uh, or you need to come up with a way that can update the machine automatically and these are the things that you know you wanna do it because this these are calls basically this is what you're doing at work this this is a, a ticket basically from someone that will call you for this that hey I'm getting this annoying pop-up can you stop it it's coming every second week is there some way I can stop this because it's annoying you know again and they don't have access so they can't do anything about it so we will close this for now because I want my system to scan this system and tell me uh, what's missing out there and everything so the scanning can take a little time though it's it's one time thing but once a scan things are going to be pretty clear that how far you are with this machine and what can we do and how are we going to do this so in this session you're learning patch management system uh, patch management system job is to scan systems and tell you what's missing uh, so then you download the patches after download you upload the patches uh, deploy the patches to the computer um, basically when you get the patch uh, and you deploy it it becomes like a software deployment um, kind of software deployment because it's using the same method but you can also go to the software deployment and see what's in there so you guys can close this and in software deployment we can see right here these are the packages right here so and the templates is already in there uh, now what you can do for example if I click on the package you can create a package uh, which we're not gonna go through now maybe some other video but you can create a package from here add a package for Windows or from here or you can go to templates which is already built for you uh, so it's an easy way to kind of find out how things gonna work in there so let's say for example I want to install uh, let's pick something very easy uh, that we can oh, how about not notepad let's go down how about Evernote so this computer this computer doesn't have any Evernote and this software comes with a template I just need to click on this and then go down and then I'm going to actually I just need to click on it on top of it I thought there was a deploy option but you just need to click on it and then we will find out that what type of package is this and what is it gonna do so it's a exe uh, this is the command that is going to be uh, pushed out and install switch is basically passive quiet and no restart so you you want to make sure that this thing you need to understand and it's kind of like self uh, explanatory if it's passive quite no restart then it's basically not it's quite so nobody can see it. this person will not notice it and it will not restart some 
software requires a restart, force restart, I will say something like that, or it might not even say quite. So they will see something and will say force re uh, computers restarting. So you need to make sure what you, when you do these software deployment, you need to understand what you're doing because you don't want to push out something when somebody's working on a document and bam, they lost just three hours of work. That would be a bad situation right there. So what we need to do is to create a pack package from here and I'm going to say direct connection to the internet because that's what we have. Um, most of you will have this. And I'm going to say OK. The selected application manager will be downloaded from the respective. So it will go ahead, it will basically go through and download this um, software, the updated one. And see right here, creating a package for Evernote 5.8.1. Uh, we just need to wait for the package to be downloaded and you will basically learn everything in your environment it will be only few softwares that's going to be uh, required most of the labs they just need a web browser because they want to get to some links uh, and uh, uh, basic imaging would work for you but but this stuff like Adobe Reader and this this is basic stuff because a lot of people will go to online and go to different sites or research sites or something like that and they like to download PDFs and all that and for that you need to have uh, the Adobe Reader um, and some re some sites requires to have a updated Adobe Reader to be able to open it so this is something very normal you get this almost every second day these kind of calls these kind of real world um, scenarios so now that we have a package right here has been created successfully and can be viewed on the package tab uh, so we can basically come back here and this is where the package got installed right here um, all we gotta do is to basically now this is ready to go so we can we can modify this we can install it on the computer we can install it for just a user we'll just install it for the computer that computer that we basically want to push it out to. So now you can name your configuration just to keep uh, uh, track of everything. So I'll put an Evernote and it says EXE. Everything is made up for you in this template. That's the benefit of template that it's already made for you. Okay. So in the bottom right here it tells you how many retries do you want to do. Sometimes you, your computer might be restarting so you might want to put more retries in there because you might think that computer is restarted but it's not connection is not made yet so your two retries will get over and you will not get it through um, so you may want to make it this more uh, but now I know my computer is on right here and then you do deploy or deploy immediately I'm just gonna do deploy immediately uh, to see if it's working now remember uh, we change our IP address we want to know if it's gonna work it might work it might not work if it doesn't work then we need to work on the IP address to get it back on 10.0 point something here you will see this ready to execute um, and you see on the bottom what happens things got a little bit moving I see there's, there's an agent status just pop up that something is happening to this computer uh, you can refresh it and see what is the status it is still in under ready to execute um, and here you have to you can come back and see um, and, I, and I, I think in the, on the bottom I forgot to mention that it, it had a target session so the target could be a full work group so it was a local office in, in un, under my local office it basically um, had my other computer too so remember um, if you guys are doing some kind of deployment make sure you guys check your target because target is going to be either one computer or it could be just like everything in that local office so um, see how I quickly forgot and, and just clicked on deploy but um, uh, this is something that I should have gone through so these some these are the things that you guys really need to take care of when you're working in a real environment you just don't want to push out things uh, to a computer they are not supposed to get it so uh, that's uh, another way to to check your deployment now we are still having um, process configuration it can like I said it can take about 90 minutes um, the, the refresh cycle is 90 minutes and this or the log off log back in could also make this process uh, start so what I do usually when I have computers 
there are needed to be some kind of software needs to be done on that I'll basically run a command and say restart them at night time or something after when they restart it automatically picks it up um, so let's see if it's going to pick it up this way or what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys if this can if you really wanna check if this is going to work can this master computer talk to this machine uh, how about we just run a quick restart on that machine so we go to patch management and inside patch management I'm just gonna go ahead and click on um, this all system and inside all system and this is generate this says there's a new uh, summary available I'm just gonna do that just to see what's going on here does this numbers change or not after the scanning but remember we, we ran scan and in the middle we started the software deployment so I'm just gonna go ahead and see what's going on here so here you go perfect example it's working it is talking to the machine and it's telling you what's up with this machine right here so this machine is running uh, missing 59 OS patches and this machine is missing third-party patches as five let's first check the third party uh, third party ones I wanna see what is it missing and that kinda easily tell you what needs to be updated on that machine so in that machine we have just like I talked about Java right the Java messages pop up here that's because of this because it's not updated and it says it's critical then we have a flash then we have Adobe Reader it's critical every other thing it's basically saying that you need to upgrade the uh, update these uh, software so you don't get these uh, pop-ups are also for security reason you know this is why I like this software because it has the vulnerability system inside it so that's make it really easy for someone to just um, quickly scan the system and find out what's critical and what I do, what I need to just push out things you know sometimes you you might be forced to do things you might, you might get a call from your network engineer network manager that hey we got a patch that's pretty bad we cannot risk it we gotta update all the machines and then you start doing your job so as you can see on right here there's a note Evernote just pop up right here and while we were talking it looks like it made it through and we're just gonna go back to configuration and it says Evernote ready to execute even though it's um, it's not done yet it, I can see that things are going through and it's working Evernote has been deployed successfully so that tells you that things went through you can go to configuration sorry. you can go to configuration from here and it sees right here in progress now this is kinda slow probably maybe and still working on and it tell you right here on the bottom is it succeeded or not yeah it succeeded so basically we just went in there we picked out the software and uh, we picked out the machine name and just deployed it by just reading some things and you can see I didn't do anything on this machine and I have ever known that's for someone new to IT uh, this stuff is pretty cool if you're new to IT for someone who is experienced in IT they do this all the time to save their time and then they get advanced stuff they, I mean even you go to the software deployment there's people that just work for software deployment so they go deep in there uh, and then uh, become experts in that so that's why in the beginning when I was talking to you guys try to learn the technology not just the software so then you guys can learn more ahead and advance your career so we did the software deployment uh, we did patch management let's go back into patch management because it's important uh, and then you see right here we're gonna click on the all systems and then it tells you that this is the vulnerable system because we scanned it so how to fix this missing third party patches we just click on that and all you gotta do is let's say for example I want all these third party patches needs to be installed I am gonna click on this checkbox and say install patch it's gonna see it's gonna make another uh, um, um, configuration file so I'm just gonna say TP all and on the bottom 
remember we forgot about this one and that's the one that basically picks all the computer you can specify computer name on here on the bottom or IP address um, so you guys can do it this way I'm just gonna do it deploy immediately and what's happening right here now is that it's going through and downloading those um, files uh, whatever whatever uh, updates that's needing it's basically getting downloaded to your computer uh, in a place um, in one of one of the folders inside your computer so um, and I'm not sure where it is but I think it's under um, yeah if I do this it might slow down my computer but um, here I guess you guys can go to your computer program file and look for uh, manage engine and inside manage engine it's uh, it, it's there but let me just make sure if it's there so there's another way when you download things to this um, computer make sure that you have a little uh, you don't have too less of space these days the computer come up with a lot of space but um, you don't want extremely low um, space because then you're gonna have problems with downloading things because uh, you know sometimes you might be downloading SP like self spec one they are like two three two two gigs and one gigs uh, and that could be a problem if you have a space issue so manage engine is here so I want to see because I did this while ago and I want to know where it is now I think it's in the bin and inside bin uh, okay it's not in the bin don't want to confuse you guys so um Okay, I need to figure this out where it is. Logs, uh, images. Unless they change the naming. Let me see if they have something else in here. Program file. And then manage engine. Okay. Alright, let's see. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it from here settings so here okay patch this is what I was looking for so you guys can easily go there patch management and I went download patches and then settings and now I can basically uh, do this does it tell you to change okay so you can even change it from here if you if you have a specific place to change things um, but if I go ahead and uh, paste this and then do this then there you go this is where you get all the downloads automatically to this place so once you're done with it you can just remove it or uh, this is another way to now, you know you have another software to deploy things you can get it from these uh, get the software from here too and deploy it from here that's another way to get some of the software that I can get it easily I just do it this way it's like a tricky way to do things um, to use one software to get another job done whatever so uh, you can put a cleanup policy here automatically remove things but uh, yeah this is not important so we're gonna go back in here and go back to our configuration and see where it is so ready to execute this is also um, and you can see TP all have been deployed and it will tell you what exactly what's what's running right now under like you know if you go back to the the status here it will go back into summary of each um, software so right now it's it's yet to apply meaning it's starting to work on it right now but it's gonna it's gonna do its job so first this is gonna run it's, it will update the Java just like the Evernote then it will update the in, install flash player then it will update this then it will update CC cleaner uh, then it will update this one so that's how it's very automatic process you don't do anything you just need to click on it you need to, you just need to access this machine uh, somehow from remote or from home from office and that's it you just need to go to patch management and then run a report once you scan the machine again uh, you can just basically go back to all systems um, once that patching is done it will scan again right and this will go away so it's going to be zero then so this machine is going to become better and better and better so then when you click on patch uh, missing the patches for windows that could be a lot of patches and could be really big some of them could be service packs so you, as you can see right here 
you need to kind of look into these patches. Now, one of the patches right here I can tell you is, um, I don't know if this has the one that's pretty bad. Like, for example, these one right here. This, this it tells you right here, it's critical. Um, something that you can get hacked easily. If I know uh, you have this system right now, I can easily run some commands and whatever commands that I can find to break your system through this patch, I can do it. Now, someone watching this video might be thinking, huh, you know what, let's attack this machine, but of course I'm going to image it and remove everything. Uh, so, this is why it's important for any company to have some type of patch management or vulnerability system to do this stuff. Uh, that's very important. So in this video you guys learn about software deployment and patch management and also on the real system. That's it for today and the last video we will be doing is on inventory system tools and reporting and administration and how do you control this machine and support this machine and some other basic stuff that can also answer some questions and this will be the last video the last one will be the last one because uh, we will be starting to do more of imaging after this and some other lab technician requirement thank you for watching job skills share and I'll see you guys in a different video